Hi everyone. Um, in front of me here, I have three of Pablo Robledo's latest offerings. Um, the Fandenbor Tarot, the reproduction of Fandenbor, the reproduction of Dodal, and one that Pablo Robledo created himself. He actually etched, um, carved the, the wood blocks himself before he print them on creating this major arcana black and white um, uncolored deck here very much like um, Hismas, the tarot sheet, the man behind the tarot sheet revival so I am very pleased that that tradition seems to be um, revived in a way, at least with Hismas and Pablo Robledo so um, Sorry, I'm just having my second cup of coffee at the same time. So, um, I've always find it really um, a little, just a tiny bit stressful to open these packages up. Not because they're hard to do, but because I always wanted to return them to its original sort of packing this way before I store them, if I don't use them immediately. And of course, I always failed. So I've opened these two up already. Let's start with the Fandenbor. I've made a video about the Fandenbor um, at least once before in the past. I have shuffled the majors only, played around with the majors only. And some of you may know I read majors only with these older decks because uh, the images flows better the way I read with them, which is very much visual only. So I read what I see only and I read them in a row of two or three and see whatever story unfolds visually. Um, so the Fandenbord Tarot is unique in that it has a sea captain or a Spanish captain and Bacchus the god of wine instead of the Pope and the Popes. I think this is from Belgium originally and it's interesting around about that area uh, intersection between um, Germany, France, Switzerland, um, Holland, there is this, uh, as well as the Reformation, um, Protestant, um, heavily Protestant around certain region of Europe, and so the images of the Pope and the Pope has become, became quite um, commercially unpalatable, I suppose. So if you remember from the flip through of the Fandenbord uh, Terror that I've done, or, as well as the comparison between a vintage mass produced edition and one majors only created by Piotr, hand created, hand made by Piotr, you will remember the features which resembles um, a particular range of these older decks where the Vieville is one example of that, and Tarot de Paris is another one, where the devil is uh, not frontal but in profile, and it has wings and flames coming out of its mouth with all the faces in the body, as well as the tower card, which isn't quite the tower but this um, shepherd with a tree that is have, uh, that's, is lightning strike, um, striking that tree, a burning tree. And temperance, where temperance isn't um, holding two jars, but only one one's on the floor, and the other hand is holding this, don't know quite uh, what the name of this is. Um, the sun, uh, very much also like the Via Vil, where it's a man uh, carrying a flag on a horse, very much uh, apparently is a model for Pixie for her own sun card in the Rider Waite Smith. And um, the hermit is often um, depicted as a monk of some order of some kind. I'm not quite sure which order this this particular outfit is, this particular robe is from, if this is a monk at all, because I'm just looking at the knot here. And um, the architect um, depicted in the star card so he's this initially I thought he's an astronomer but apparently he's an architect you know that's like a measuring thing there's a name for it which I can't quite remember um, as he is uh, designing or building his next building there 
And the other feature is this moon card where there is an elderly lady with, would you call this a spindle? I can't remember what it's called. Um, the stick with thread that you, from cotton, you create a thread on the stick. And so that's Bacchus there, the god of wine, instead of the Hierophant or the Pope. And Death has like a shawl or a cape, or wearing, well, what well, looks like a shawl anyway, instead of um, on a horse. And that's the captain there, I think. The Spanish captain, I want to say. Yeah, why the Spanish captain? If anybody know, I haven't really done my research on that, but I think that the Espanol is Spanish, isn't it? Capitano. So there'll be stories there, I'm sure, and that'll be quite interesting to investigate. And the world, if you remember the Tao de Paris, is this, um, the world is that symbolic world that uh, the figures of the emperor, I know, again, there's a name for it, which I cannot remember. <clears throat> when you are crowned, you would you would carry some kind of thing and in one hand you'll hold that so they're like the world and then with the cross on top of it. So instead of the one figure in the middle and the four framing, um, the one figure in the central, there is this almost more, instead of spiritual, it looks more nationalistic almost. Um, the world and the four direction of the winds. So that's the Fundenbor. And if you would like me to do a comparison between Pablo's Fundenbor and Piotr's um, handmade Fundenbor, as well as the vintage, let me get a close up of the paper or the cardstock, and the vintage mass produced one, let me know. I might at some stage do it anyway, but I'm not quite sure when yet, because it means I have to dig up the other two editions. And you know me in storage. Yes, it's very, very smooth. Um, it's quite dark and a bit cold and a bit glum today. It still feels very much like winter, even though it's supposed to be spring and close to summer. Um, so the, the light, I have to turn the light on actually, and so it's not the best way to do this is natural light from this direction, but we're not getting any at the moment. So we'll leave there and I'll go through the miners really quickly. So that's the cover. Feel free to pause that and read that at your own leisure. Well, let me just do this, shall I? Usually I found in this range of um, historical decks, and when I say historical, I mean older, um, Marseille-like or pre-Golden Dawn, pre-Esoteric Tarot. So that Ace of Cups, the cups seems to be quite interesting. I'm fascinated by the different shapes of cups in the Ace of Cups in various older decks. Um, be quite interesting to know what that says. If anybody knows, feel free to pop a comment down below. I like how the flower is quite quite solid there. So that's the page of the Valet of Cups, the Queen, the King. Chevalier or Cavalier or Chevalier, yeah, I don't know, the Knight. Cavalier, Cavalier. Um, this is, so that's reversible, that's interesting, the Ace of Coins, that's Cart Swiss Fabrique in Brussels, is that right? So it's a Swiss something, but it's made in Brussels. I shall investigate and get back to you when I do the Fundenbord Focus video. So... <clears throat> Coins. That is the Ace of Swords. The Aces I often find very... Now that Two of Swords is quite cute with the... I wonder if that means something. Again, I have yet to investigate. So the Three of Swords has a crown through. That's interesting. 
Um, so that's interesting, the crown. And here we have vegetations, more vegetations and flowers. And here there's nothing. There's just so many swords there. There's not enough space for anything else. And so in a reading that could proven to be, that could prove to be quite an interesting tool to say, you see all that plant, all that growth, and then you see the nine and ten. There's just no room for anything else. And then there is a term for that. Um, chiro or Cairo or Kiro. C-H-I and then R-H-O, which is the two initials in Greek, or is it in Latin, of... Um, Christ, I think. So I, I often see this figure in um, in um, Catholic churches. I don't know if other churches have them. I'm sure they do as well. But I remember growing up with those, with this particular symbol here, in usually on the priests, uh, the robe of the priests. I recognize that Alpha Omega because I also recognize the symbol from Easter candles. Um, I don't go to church anymore, but for Easter, Holy Week, between Palm Sunday and Easter, as well as Christmas, I usually go. And my sister was scolding me the other day for not going for my birthday, but I have never really gone for Mass for my birthday. I know some people go for Masses if they don't go to church at all, at least on their birthday, New Year, All Souls Day, uh, Easter, and Christmases. Um, so that's uh, uh, Easter candle. I often see the symbol as well. So I appreciate having that there, um, not so much because I'm Catholic anymore, but because it is one of those things that I can personally relate to in a world of um, tarot and Western esotericism, where a lot of the symbols are not personally, um, not personally attached to my cultural conditioning. And so this is, um, I'm sorry for the pauses, I have to cough. I don't want to cough into the microphone. So this is Robledo's Terror of Marseille. Um, I'm going to call it, uh, he has another creation of his Terror of Marseille where he uh, combined a variety of features from a variety of kinds of Marseille and Marseille-like decks. Um, it's in a box, if you recall. Um, it has this sort of... Pablo Robledo have created several decks over the years, and I can refer you to Collect Tarot, especially for those who are in the US, um, to check out and do a search of Pablo Robledo, and you'll see some of his older decks. That's how I found out. Um, I will put a link down below. I think at the moment, the only way for you to purchase Pablo's deck um, is through Collect Hero. I think you may be able to purchase from him directly, but because he's in Argentina, apparently they don't have PayPal there, so or it's very, very hard to use PayPal there. So you have to send cash, either with MoneyGram or Western Union. I found from New Zealand Western Union's cheaper. And with how much PayPal has been charging me lately, at least those in New Zealand, uh, Western Union seem to be quite reasonable to me. Uh, in the past, Western Union used to charge about as much as uh, wire transfer that banks used to charge, which is a lot of money, like $40 New Zealand. Um, so he carved the wood himself before. The wood block, I mean. So he carved the wood block printer himself. He carved the wood and then he print these images using those wood block. So very much like Terra Sheet Revival, very much like uh, Hismas um, and Terra Sheet Revival. And it is a revival indeed, at least judging by these two crafts people. Um, and that's very encouraging indeed. This I would consider to be homemade. I think he hand cut these decks himself. Uh, Pablo at home apparently and how does he print this I'm not sure but this is not only independently produced but this is also 
homemade in a sense. And what what constitute homemade? What constitute uh, indie but not homemade? Uh, it's a whole other conversation. So that's the Cairo Chiro. How how do you pronounce that? I need to Google. C H I second word R H O, and then there's alpha, and omega, and there's the P with the thing across it. So some of you will be very familiar with that symbol. So that's uh, Pablo's own creation of Tao de Marse, uh, Pablo's own hand-carved wood blocks, made from his own hand-carved wood blocks. The third one is the Dodal. Um, my first introduction, my gateway deck, was the Dodal by Flor Noir. Before then, I didn't quite understand um, what the big deal was with Tarot de Marseille, with these older decks, because they seem very crude to me. Now hopefully I will be able to put these back into their wrappings after this, because we'll have to store them somehow. And so this is very much the old-fashioned way, if you look at some of the older decks that um, Yves Renault is uh, reproducing, with some of the decks, I think the Madenier is one of them, he had reproduced the original wrapping paper uh, from way back in the day, and so this is in that tradition. Um, it is wrapped in this manner, and I find that really, really quite charming indeed. So, Okay, so that's interesting. So the paper here is a little bit more um, discolored, shall I say, uh, sort of brownish, reminiscent of his um, other Tarot de Marseille, which I will, if, if, did I make a video about that? I can't remember. If I have, I'll, um, put that video at the end of this video. If not, I'll put a link down below so you can check check that out. That was my first Robledo's deck and I remember the color quite bright. And I remember this sort of, this sort of, uh, what do you call this color? So the base is not white and I think because in some instances the faces were made white. So in this case, the, the faces aren't could be just the lighting. The faces seem a bit paler, but could just be my lighting. There's a name, okra? No, taupe? No. There's a name for this kind of um, darkish cream here. So that's very, it has a very different feel from the facsimile for sure. It has a very different feel from Flor Noir's as well. Flor Noir's is very graphic, very modern, very crisp. This feels more vintage. Even though if you look at the facsimile, you know that the facsimile is very um, messy, almost. You know, the it's very sloppy. The, the colors are all over the place, out of line a little bit. It's It does not look like a deck that is created with care. And I suspect hardly any of them really were, because they are supposed to be cheap, uh, mass-produced playing cards, the equivalent of our playing cards today. So the coloring here is very bright. Um, when I say bright, I meant it's quite om almost close to that neon bright, not so much bright in a... And that reminds me very much of his other deck, um, the one that has this Ecru? I want to say there's a name for this kind of cream, this dark cream color. This very much reminiscent of that. So I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought, do I really need another Dodal? But this Dodal's coloring is very Pablo. And so I'm glad I have this. I don't know if this one is um, out of stock or out of print. And I'm not quite sure whether he's going to print anymore. But that's an interesting highlight in the center there. It's a bit lighter blue, but um, it was a mission and a half for me to 
yeah so that blue isn't isn't uniform there to get this because I had put my name down with collect terror but I think um, I fell through the cracks and so I didn't get notification when they um, restock and by the time they restock um, the door doll had sold out so Bob at collect terror is wonderful to deal with so if especially if you're in the US uh, if you're not in the US you need to calculate shipping costs and um, import taxes and the rest of it but I really don't know what other options you have if you need to pay with PayPal uh, so collect terror in the US is somebody you might want to contact and perhaps put your name down for the next batch of shipping so Pablo shipped from Argentina one small batch at a time to Bob at collect terror if you want to purchase directly from Pablo, um, you'll have to send cash, first of all. And second of all, um, you may need Google Translate when you talk to Pablo. Um, Pablo, if you're watching this, I wonder what smell, that lovely smell that you have on the cards. So fresh. So as you can see, the coloring here is, say, compared to um, do you see what I mean? Yeah. So that's very much reminiscent of of his um, earlier deck. So I'm gonna pass through. We'll go straight to. has that sort of watercolor feel to it with the sort of blotchiness which I rather like so the rest the line work everything is through and through Dodal so there's this sort of it looks like it's been hand colored with this sort of uneven which I really really like because Flor Noir is very gra very computer graphic very crisp and Flor Noir's version is always a good getaway I found to people who doesn't quite get the aesthetic of these woodcut woodblock um, decks. Yeah, so that's it. Um, three charming, charming decks from Pablo Robledo. 2018 and I believe for the hand carved one I think this was created last year the the year here is 2017 here uh, as a data production I'm thinking uh, even though I think this is only available this year so I suppose it takes time to carve 22 plates by hand so yeah I'll talk to you guys later bye